Anybody else, when you take the first sip of the cold brew, you imagine that you're, you're hitting the metal straw like that meme image of Matthew McConaughey from True Detective taking a, a drag off of his marijuana cigarette? You know, the one where he's like, that's me with the cold brew. Like this. Beautiful. What? Nope. What? You know the image? You know the image I'm talking about? Hold on, I'm eating some breakfast too. Please describe breakfast. Okay, it's um, ingredients. Protein isolate, cane syrup, brown rice syrup, palm kernel oil, vegetable glycerin, unsweetened chocolate, flour, rice flour, chicory fiber syrup, roasted soybeans, cocoa, High oleic sunflower oil and rice starch. This is what's known as a uh, a Cliff Builders bar. I'm going to be honest. This is the first time I've ever looked at the ingredients on a Builders bar. Every single one of those ingredients scares the shit out of me. Is a single one of those a real food? I mean, it is like a, it's a, a chocolate bar with like a, a layer of sand... That is the protein, I assume. I gotta eat some real food for breakfast, man. This is crazy. I didn't know. I mean, here's my problem, though. There are, like, real ingredient uh, protein bars, but they all taste like pure ass. The RX bar, the Lara bar. Anytime I see a protein bar that's like, we only have five readable ingredients. I'm like, I bet you taste like uh, old tree sap. At least it's real. I will say a builder's bar has a terrible mouthfeel, too. It is hard to... You cannot eat a builder's bar fast. Every single bite is like eating eight saltines in one minute. It soaks up all the available moisture in your mouth. little regrettable. Hey, Anel, you ever wake up with a night terror? I've never woken up with a night terror, but legitimately for like the last week, I would say five out of seven mornings, I wake up with a Charlie horse in my right calf. And there's no better alarm clock than like, you know, I'm sleeping, I'm sleeping, I'm sleeping, I'm dreaming. Ah! Ah! <laughs> you know what I mean? And then you gotta like try to, from being asleep, to instantaneously trying to like stretch your foot, but your muscles are contracting, so it's pulling your foot down, but you're trying to stretch your foot up in order to stretch the muscle to get the Charlie horse out of there, but your muscles are contracting and pulling the foot down. Yeah, I think it's, it's related to the dehydration from the food poisoning. We're getting there, man, it takes time. I, told, I honestly think I, I saved my own life on Saturday when I drank three bottles of Gatorade in like an hour. I was feeling okay on Saturday, but I was like, I'm not, I'm not 100%. I just bought a bunch of Gatorade and I just drank it until I felt like that was enough. And then like an hour later, my kidneys were like, we're here. Hi. Um, hello. Did you merce us? And I'm back, baby. Yeah, I've got Medea's kidneys. Is that a problem? You would think he got like dysentery or something. I mean, honest, I don't know what, the, let me, let me check. Dysentery symptoms. Is this something people still get? Um, well, like, what I've realized is that, like, all of these, like, bacterial and viral infections of the gut and the intestine, they all have the same symptoms. Diarrhea, fever, nausea. I'm not going to read the last one because it's a little gross, but yellowing of the eyes, a la spider flu. Toxic, cytotoxic megacolon. Have you guys gotten the new form of spam text message? I had heard about this uh, making its way across the world, but had not experienced it myself. But at 3.57 a.m., I got uh, a text message that said, Hey name, which was not my name. This is insane name, a name I've never uh, heard in my entire life. Um, just wondering how your house search in Halifax is going. 
Hey, have you been, are you looking for somebody to help sell your house? And then they just texted like the same thing nine times between 3 a.m. and 10 a.m. I'm dying here, man. I, but I, I didn't want to report them as spam because I don't know if it's spam. I didn't want to blow up like their whole business. But I do want to block the message, or block the number. But I've never blocked anybody's number before. If that's not spam, what is? Well, like, you know, when you get a voicemail and it's in a foreign language and all you hear is like Amazon gift card. That's 100% spam. I feel like maybe I just had like an overzealous real estate agent who, who somebody gave the wrong number to. I just can't imagine that works, man. Like what, what kind of person out there is like, you know what? I wasn't that interested in my sell in selling my house, but now that I got, got cold texted by a real estate agent, it sounds like a pretty good idea. I was also laughing. I don't even know if I should admit this, um, but Dan linked me to uh, a streamer last night who was doing a stream called E Dating. Maybe you've heard of him. He's like the biggest streamer on the platform, I guess. His name is Aiden Ross. So he was running like a, a dating game TV show with a young lady and a bunch of prospective male suitors. And he asked, he asked her what she did for work. I'm not going to answer that question, but all I'm going to say is that she said, but in the next month, I'm going to start getting into flipping houses. And I was like, lady, you got to read the damn economic news lately. Your timing is all fucked up. Are you kidding me? Interest rates have never been higher. Home prices are still high, but are, are potentially coming down. But either way, you're signing a 30-year fixed mortgage at like 6% now. Uh, two years ago, you'd be signing at like 1.75. Like, what? Are you, who's going to tell her? I will say there's two inventions I would love to... Um, I would love to invent. And I don't think that this makes any scientific sense. But a silent vacuum would be an insane invention that would go so hard and let me tell you the the biggest one of all a silent fume hood for over top of your stove that's the i i don't use my my range hood as often as i should because it's so damn loud that i find it annoying I find myself being resentful. My wife will say like, hey, can you turn on the, the fan in the kitchen? And I'm like, oh, my, my borscht doesn't smell good enough for you? Then now I gotta deal, while well, I'm cooking, I gotta deal with the whole time. But honestly, I think it's a good thing. Oh, we definitely want lightning. I think it's a good thing to, to have on, especially because I don't know if you guys have looked up the recent scientific literature on the polluting effect of gas stoves, if you have a gas stove. I didn't know this. I, I apologize if you've never heard this before and you find yourself being the bearer of bad, or you find me being the bearer of bad news. I have a gas stove and I love my gas stove, but apparently there, there is a movement away from them because it releases some pollutants into your house. So the recommendation, you know, if you're not going to replace your stove, which is obviously very expensive, is uh, keep your range hood on at all times while you're cooking. But that shit is loud as hell. So if they could make a silent range hood, I mean, I'd, I'd be all in, man. Microplastics and natural gas. It's the 21st century diet. I'm going to be honest, I think I have less microplastics in my body than the average person. Because never once in my life have I used one of those fabric softeners where you fill a plastic cap with a bunch of little microplastic beads and then throw it in the washer with your clothes. I think I have a minimum, uh, I have less microplastic in my body as a result of that. Also, I never used um, like a facial cleanser that had uh, plastic in it that served as an abrasive in order to exfoliate your skin. You think the average person uses those? It depends, because if we're talking Twitch chat, I don't think the average person even uses detergent. <laughs> so fabric softener is a little bit, is one step beyond that. Salsa on my balls, boys. Salt, salt, salsa on my balls, boys. So true. We should bring dubstep back. I wasn't even really like into dubstep the first time around because instead I was, um, I don't mean to brag, but while you were listening to Destroyer, I was dissecting, uh, the menagerie of, of 
beauties that were present in Destroyer's 2012 album Kaput. We are not the same. Should we though? I mean, I don't know. I, I kind of like how it sounds. Uh, like my perception of dubstep is that it sounds like when you would get like a vinyl agenda as a kid in like middle school and then you'd scrape your fingernails across it and it would go like. <laughs> It kind of sounds like the industrial noises from the Terminator 2 theme song, uh, but Night Chord, something like that. I just got here, what's he talking about? Oh, we're basically just floundering, looking for like a bit to stick. There's There's been some, some micro bits so far, we haven't found like a really uh, a th thick topic for conversation yet. You get the choice between a meat dinner or a fish dinner. What would you take? You know, it's a, it's a great question, a meat dinner or a fish dinner. Here's the thing. Obviously, like, not all meats are created equal, but fish has an insanely high variance. Like, if, if you're giving me a choice of fish, you know, as a, let, let me big shot you for a second. I, I think the, the ultimate test of this for me was when I was in Iceland. You had the choice, you could eat some reindeer, or you could eat some halibut. I went for the halibut like every time. When you get the 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 creme de la creme of the fish, I'm a fish guy. If you're giving me the choice between like a, a random white fish and uh, like a half decent steak, then I would take the steak. But I do, I think the highs of, a, of, of fish for me are preferable to the highs of meat. But there are, they are, uh, there's bounty from nature in all directions for sure. Fish is cringe. Fish is like the opposite of cringe. Honestly, you don't even want me to say this because like it's gonna be, I, I'm gonna end up offending some people that would rather not be offended. Um, the cringe, this is not to say it's the worst, but the cringest meat is definitely beef because people are just like so insanely in love with it. Beef is like a the, the culinary shortcut for like, look at how masculine I am. Look at, the, look at this big steak. Look at how big this steak is. Holy cow. That's cringe to me. Fish is not cringe. Fish is like, you know, it, it's, it's good for you. It tastes good. There's a large amount of variety in it. It's in some cases less environmentally destructive. I don't think that's cringe at all. What's cringe for me is when people like won't eat a bass because they say it tastes too fishy. That's, in my world, that's cringe. I don't eat fish because it tastes too fishy. I, you know, I'm not even mad. More fish for me, as far as I'm concerned. There's great variety in fish too, you know? A salmon tastes different than a, than a halibut, is different uses than a cod, different uses than a rainbow trout or an arctic char. Even like when we get sushi, I know that there's a lot of people who are like, you know, they like the salmon, they like the tuna, they don't really like the mackerel. I'll take the mackerel, and it, it, hands down. Uh, the, the oilier and fishier a fish, to some extent, the better for me. A pickled herring, I, sign me up. Lutefisk, don't sign me up. I've never had it, but I don't think I would love it. I don't mind an oily fish, though. A sturgeon. I'll tell you, and, and I apologize to um, my boomer Korean audience. There might be one person out there watching. The worst fish I've ever had in my life was anglerfish, which is a dish, I, I had it in Korea, it's called Agui Jim. And I was told like, oh, it's like a really like, old Korean people love it, it's like kind of a, an upscale meal, like it's a special treat. And then an, a, a restaurant opened in our neighborhood and I was like, I gotta try this once. When I ate it, I was like, this is easily one of the worst seafood dishes I've ever had in my entire life. I don't mean to be a little ageist here, but I think any food where it's predominantly people like over the age of 60 that eat it and young people have said, uh, you know, I'm not interested. I have to feel like most of them are kind of bad. Maybe bad is not the right, just not to my like, like um, organ meat. I feel like the average person who like willfully buys like liver at the grocery store and cooks it must be easily in like their 70s. Love me some cabbage rolls. I'm gonna be honest, I've never had them. I, I would give it a try. What, what kind of cuisine is cabbage roll? It's like Northern European, Polish, Danish, Finnish, Eastern. Okay, I'd give it a try. I haven't eaten that much Eastern European food. I, I just know like pierogies and, and borscht, basically, and that's it. Kielbasa? Okay, I love you, baby, but all I can think about is kielbasa sausage. Your butt cheese is warm. 
I'll check your dipstick. You need lubrication, honey. My kielbasa sausage has just got to perform. Is that not how you order it in the restaurant? That's on the secret menu. Excuse me. <laughs> Sorry, I forgot not everybody's familiar with every song on Tenacious D's uh, first album. Something about Jack Black's voice puts me in a bad mood. Honestly, like, you have my sympathy. Because just Jack Black's mere existence puts me in a good mood. He's just got a certain way about him that just makes me... I would literally... He just seems like a great guy to just, like, go out for breakfast with. I feel like he, he's effortlessly entertaining. He just seems like a... I'm not saying he's a good guy, and I don't mean I don't mean to say that he's a bad guy at all. But there's no way for you to know. I think that's where people get in trouble, you know? They, they like a celebrity's work, they like a celebrity's personality, and thus they assume that they're like a saint. If we've learned anything over like the past decade, we should acknowledge that I don't know anything about Jack Black's home life. I mostly just like his, uh, his work. I have no reason to believe he's a bad guy, but he does seem like he'd be fun to hang out with. He's got like an, in, an infectious exuberance that, to be honest, I'm a little jealous of. I hate his work, but he seems like a cool dude. That's completely fair. I'm sure there's actors that I feel the same way for. I mean, honestly, that used to be how I felt about like Will Smith, and then he slapped Chris Rock and wrote his autobiography where he said when he was younger, he would throw up after he ejaculated, and I'm like, honestly, it seems kind of high maintenance. You know what? I don't know. Someone said Ryan Reynolds? I don't know. Like, Ryan Reynolds, he seems fine. Obviously, I'm not a huge fan of his work, but... I don't really... When I see Ryan Reynolds in a role, I'm not like, oh, it would be really cool to, like, hang out with him outside of, like, the Deadpool costume. I think I would be exhausted. This is not meant to be like too much of a knock on him. He's a basic birch. So true. Salsa on my balls, boys. I mean, if I'm being honest, like, uh... There were times when I when I was at the, the depths of, you know, negativity as a result of this food poisoning. I feel like I... I is it possible to get the bends on lands? Or is that one of those things that can, like, only happen when you're surfacing too fast from like an underwater dive. Can you can you just like be so messed up that you have the bends on earth? Has anyone ever gotten terrestrial bends? Altitude sickness? That doesn't sound too terrestrial to me. In a hyperbaric chamber? Do those actually exist? Like the thing that David Duchovny had his hand in in, the, in Zoolander? They do? They do? Okay. I didn't know that. I feel like the the worst part of being a professional athlete would be doing all that weird stuff. You know, like, you, you, you just walk off the court, it's game four of the Eastern Conference NBA Finals. You gotta, immediately they're like, okay, hey, Jason Tatum, we're gonna put you in an industrial-sized cauldron that's just full of ice water. You're like, come on, man, I'm, I'm tired. Oh, we got to put you in like a, a walk-in blast chiller like you work at a a French bakery or something like that. It's just it, it, that that stuff just seems unnecessary. He probably just he's hungry, dude. Just let him let him have a snack or something. What 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 happened to good old dirt? I mean, the stories from like the the old NHL are so funny that like nowadays people are uh, I mean, they're they're professional athletes, right? Like they're incredibly concerned with their nutrition, their vitamin intake, you know, timing their water so that they don't get cramps and stuff like that. If you read stories from like the 80s NHL, they're like, oh, we went into double overtime, so we ordered like 10 large pizzas for the team. They would smoke cigarettes as they got ready to play their sixth consecutive period of hockey and then eat like a quick pepperoni pizza. No off-season training at all, the, the Dustin Bufflin strat. I do, I mean, there was kind of like, this is gonna farm plus twos, I, and I apologize for it. But I really feel like the 80s must have been like the easiest time on earth to succeed. You could be a professional athlete and not take care of yourself. You didn't have to fight in a world war or like Vietnam or something like that. After the 70s, the economy started ripping. Like, nowadays, to be a professional athlete, you gotta... 
crush the dreams of like a hundred kids your age to take their spot in the fifth round of the draft and then live that dream for 24 hours for six years, get two games in the NHL, get sent down to the AHL, next season get seven games in the NHL, hope that the dude in front of you tears his ACL so you can get a breakthrough and be, be on the third line with second power play minutes and hope that you get discovered. Maybe they trade you to a team with a positional. In the 80s, it was like, they're just like, that kid's really good. Guess what? You're the captain of the uh, California Golden Seals. I'm not saying you didn't have to work hard as well, but like compared to what it must be like to become a pro athlete in like the 2020s, it's crazy. You could be a comedian just talking about airplane food. It's absolutely true. You could literally tell the worst jokes of all time. It was my wife's birthday. She wanted to go to the opera. The opera! So I'm sitting there and the guy up on stage, he's going, oh, la 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 la. Finally, I'm there for one hour, two hours. I couldn't take it. I stood up and I said, hey, shut the fuck up! Sorry, it's literally just a... It's a Tim Heidecker joke, but I, I love it. Oh, sorry, sorry. Slash marker 20 mins. Let's run back another one. By the way, I have not seen um, Miss Marvel yet. Did they get Little Richard to do the theme song? I feel like he could crush it. Good golly, Miss Marvel. I don't know what she does. She's got, a, she's got energy powers or something like that. Huge minus two, huge minus two. Okay, never, sorry, sorry. Also, I have to acknowledge, I wasn't 100% confident whether um, little Richard was alive or dead. Apparently he's deceased, so I guess he would not be recording a song. However, I do also have to say, and th you never know how this could have happened, so I'm not knocking him. I've told this story before, but in like the year 1999 or 2000, my parents took me down to Ottawa, Ontario, the capital of the country, for um, Ottawa Blues Fest. And they were so excited to see the headline act on, on Friday. It was Little Richard. And then he was supposed to come on at like 7.15 p.m. or something like that. And they kept just coming up to the mic and being like, Hey, we know you guys are really excited to see Little Richard, but he's just running a little bit late, okay? So don't worry about He's going to be here. Don't worry about it. And then it, it got to the point where it was like, I don't even know, like 10, 10.30 p.m. And then my parents were like, we just got to go back to the hotel, man. We got like a little kid with us. We're tired. At the end of the day, it's not like they were huge Little Richard fans. They were just, you know, they just knew who he was. So that in and of itself is just enough of a reason to go see him in concert, I guess. So I don't know if he had like, I, honestly, if he had like a food poisoning situation, he's got my sympathy, obviously. But that's... One of two things I know about Little Richard, the other one is that he sings Good Golly Miss Molly. Well, any other reason isn't valid? Well, there's multiple, you know, there's reasons to be laid that scale invalidity. You know, if his kid refused to put her shoes on to go to daycare, then sure, he has my sympathy too. Hey, here's a question for you. I, here's some spoilers for the 1982 John Carpenter film, The Thing. But if you've not seen it by now, you don't have my sympathy. You don't have spoiler protection. Because not only is the movie like 40 years old, but also everybody online for the last 20 years has been like, oh, my favorite horror movie of all time is The Thing. Oh, my favorite sci-fi movie of all time is The Thing. So if you haven't seen The Thing by now, you don't get to pretend that like, oh, it was on my list. I just hadn't gotten to it. Do you think that Childs is infected with the alien shapeshifter at the end of The Thing? What's your pet theory on that? I, because I know a lot of people, they like the idea that he is. I'm personally in the no camp. I think, I, I think the movie hits a little different at the end if he's just a guy, but there's, they know that there's no way for them to prove it to one another. And as a result, the only thing that they can do is, is choose to die alone in the Antarctic. I like when he says it's clobber in time. That's, you see, you've got, that's a different thing. That's Michael Chiklis as the thing from, uh, from the Fantastic Four movies from the mid 2000s. I don't know if he says it during uh, Fantastic Four 2, The Rise of the Silver Surfer, but he definitely does say it in Fantastic Four 1. I know I talk about it like too often, but I just love that when the thing is supposed to be incognito, 
He literally is just like covered in stone. Like he's a man made out of orange stone. And then they give him a trench coat and a hat and then he just blends right in with society. It's so good. The trench coat sells it, man. Bullet Bounce, a 21st century sport played on a uniquely designed tabletop court. It's easy to play, hard to pass. If you learn the game, you learn the test. Played in a uniquely designed tabletop court. I love it. Such a Curtis Blow line. Anyone can play, big or small. Size doesn't determine a win at all. Curtis Blow goes hard. I mean, honestly, he goes harder than... Um, I'm trying to think of a modern rapper. <laughs> and I'm struggling. <laughs> oh, man. I, I feel like Jason Sudeikis in Booksmart right now when he's uh, Uber driving the girls to the party and uh, they accidentally use media share to play pornographic sounds through his car stereo and he says, is that Cardi B? Classic line, man. Cla one, of, one of the lines from 2019 movies. When Jason Sudeikis said that, my theater stood up and went, Yes! Dude, you never get like that Captain America wielding Mjolnir, Jared Leto versus Venom, it's Morbin time sort of moment at a comedy, right? Like it never, no one's ever like, oh, check out my theater reaction to uh, the death of Stalin. People were going crazy when General Zukov showed up. Holy cow. Theater reaction to the turkey ass callback in Norbit. Dude, they should re release Norbit just for that. And they could even put in the, like, it's Norbin time or something like that. It's a perfect fit. What's the name? Here's a trivia question for you. What's the name of uh, Norbit's uh, love interest in, in Norbit? Is it Resputina? I think it's Resputina. Respucia? Something like that. I will say, I think Norbit. Well, obviously being horrible is definitely better than um, The Adventures of Pluto Nash. Can you explain the plot of Norbit? Okay, so Norbit um, is one of the movies where Eddie Murphy plays like every character. Norbit um, is an orphan. He's left on the doorstep of an orphanage run by an older Chinese couple. The patriarch of the family played very regrettably by, you guessed it, Eddie Murphy. He's raised in the orphanage, um, but he's kind of like a meek nerd. So he's in love with another girl at the orphanage who's very nice to him. But then, because he's bullied, uh, Rasputia protects him. So he feels like he owes Rasputia a debt of gratitude, but actually she like abuses him, mistreats him and and cheats on him and stuff like that. Then you get to the modern day, okay? So like Norbit's an adult and he's like henpecked in his marriage. Rasputia, she like gets in her car. She's gained some weight um, and she goes, Norbit, did you adjust my car seat? I can't even see over my, you know what? Did you adjust my car seat? And then he's like, no, Rasputia, I didn't adjust your car seat, I swear I did. And then she goes, Norbit, you stop acting a fool back there before I smack you across your damn mouth. It's like a lot of that. Um, I don't really remember the, the rising action of the plot, but at some point Norbit's love interest from when he was a child comes back as played by Tandy Newton. Um, and she's about to marry a guy, like she's very successful in life. But then, like, the guy is going to buy the orphanage and they think that they're going to... Norbit and Tandy Newton thinks that they're going to buy the orphanage and, like, make it better. But then it turns out he's going to, like, bulldoze it and, and turn it into condos or something like that. So Norbit has to stop the orphanage from getting bought by the property developer while winning the heart of Tandy Newton. Um, at the same time. Also though, while Norbit is trying to woo Tandy Newton and escape from his marriage, which is not based on a foundation of mutual respect, Respucia, by the way, Respucia is played by Eddie Murphy. Respucia's brothers are um, trying to hunt Norbit down because they don't want Norbit to escape from the marriage because he's kind of like, uh, He's a gopher for them, you know? He's like their butler, he's like their maid, etc., etc. 
That includes uh, Terry Crews in a, in a star-making role as Respucia's brother. Which, of course, leads to the, the classic standout scene from the movie where uh, Norbit goes over to Respucia's house for dinner. And then everybody at the family is getting like turkey leg, turkey breast. And then Norbit says, you got a leg, you got a breast, what do I get? And then Terry Crews says, don't worry Norbit, we saved the best part for you, turkey ass. And then it shows a picture of the plate and it's like a, a prosthetic ass of a turkey with like butt cheeks and a hole and everything. Oh man, that is good stuff. And then there's a callback later, because Norbit had dinner with, uh, with again, his childhood love interest at a restaurant, and Rasputia's trying to unravel and, like, prove that he's, like, gonna cheat on her, right? So she goes to the restaurant and goes, was Norbit here? And then the chef goes, no. And then she goes, then how do you explain this turkey ass? And it zooms in again on like a plate of half eaten turkey ass. Oh man. Oh. So good. Anyway, so that's Norbit. That's like the whole movie basically. And my theater, it was one of the moments in cinema history. When they did the turkey ass callback. Holy cow. Thanks for the spoilers. Uh, you can watch it. It's on Netflix. I think it's one of those comedies. It's like 73 minutes long. It's like actually shorter than a, an episode of prestige television now. It is widely considered one of the worst movies ever made. At least one of the worst movies of 2000 to 2010. It's 102 minutes long? Well, it felt like 73. You'll pay for your whole seat, but you'll only use the edge. I always had this suspicion. There's a, a Cambodian restaurant in my hometown. They were literally open like Friday for dinner, Saturday for lunch and dinner, and then Sunday for lunch. And I was always like, how can you maintain your business with like, four meal services a week it doesn't seem but the thing is the food was absolutely banging in a way i i almost feel like a drug front restaurant actually stands a chance to be better than a regular restaurant because you want to avoid suspicion like you need the food to be good so that if like the dea comes to eat at your place they're like well i thought this was a front but actually the golden chicken is slapping all the Cambodian restaurants in Kingston are run by one guy. Well, the way I understood it, the way I understood it, for, for a little bit of a, a context, I lived in a, my hometown is called Kingston, Ontario. It has like 130,000 people, um, but it has a bizarrely bustling Thai and Cambodian restaurant scene, like way more than you would expect for the size of the city. What I had heard, is that it started when like one person who had moved to Kingston from uh, Thailand or, or Cambodia started a restaurant. The restaurant was great, it became insanely popular. So he sold it to a, a new ownership group and then opened another restaurant with basically the exact same menu and then rinse and repeat that. And that's how if you live in Kingston, you end up with a, a, a downtown core that has walk-in. Nam Pen, Cambodiana, Pat's Restaurant, Royal Angkor. Like, there's like seven Thai and Cambodian restaurants in downtown Kingston that all have a very similar menu. And they're all, um, I mean, they're all good when the guy runs it. And then when they sell it, it varies from that point onwards. But I, it's the only place in my life I've ever had a dish called Golden Chicken. It's like a Kingston, Ontario special. It's fantastic. I watched a little bit of Apollo's good friend Steven Suptic playing Valorant uh, last night. I gotta tell you, I'm not cut out for that world anymore. I only watched like one round, but he had the game's equivalent of the op. He got three kills in that round. I literally did not even see the, um, the enemies that he shot when he headshot them for the instant KO. Like there was no gunfight. It was just, he was just talking, talking, talking. He peeks, his crosshair is like exactly where uh, an enemy head would have to be. 
it doesn't even enter the central processing section of his brain. He's just like, eh, boom. And then he goes and immediately like peaks the next section of the map. I, I can't handle that. I will say though, they, they really crushed it with like the, the user experience in Valorant. The fact that the, the bong sound you get when you kill an enemy gets better, like or it, it gets higher the more enemies you've killed that round is so good. Bung, 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 bung. You know what I'm talking about? You ever do DMT? Sorry to disappoint you, I'm, or maybe happy to appoint you. I've never done the spirit molecule, DMT. Isn't that the chemical that floods your brain when you're about to die, yet you're bald? I know I'm a bald free thinker, and yet I've never done DMT. We're, we're not all the same, okay? Honestly, I don't think I need to do DMT, just because I, I get enough fulfillment from my nootropic stack anyway. You're like my Joe Rogan. Don't, don't put that on me. I'm just a guy, okay? I'm not even out here asking questions. I'm like the opposite of that. I'm a guy, I'm just out here telling stories. About Norbit, predominantly. I have about the same level of uh, scientific literacy as Joe Rogan, though. For example, what, what's some of my favorite uh, pseudo-scientific takes from me? A, a large Coke Zero from McDonald's is actually healthy for you. I, if you're thirsty and you drink a large Coke Zero from McDonald's, I ask you to simply drink it and then tell me it wasn't good for you. Drink the whole thing, feel how good that large Coke Zero makes you feel, and then look me in the eyes and tell me it's junk food. There's some, I'm, I don't think soda's good for you, but something about a, a large fountain Coke Zero from McDonald's, it's a performance enhancing drug. It is, it's a large health potion from Diablo 2. This is how doctors ended up prescribing cocaine. I'm just gonna say it again. I can say this because I'm not a scientist and I'm just asking questions. Maybe medicine was better when people were getting prescribed like cocaine and heroin and cough medicine had alcohol in it. Cause now like we have incredible medicine, but it's almost impossible to get because it can all be turned into uh, illicit narcotics with like seven extra ingredients you can just find online and a two liter Sprite bottle. So like, I can't even take the good medicine anymore because it, people can turn it into bad drugs. I feel like maybe it was better when you could just go to an old timey Freddy Farkas frontier pharmacist and some guy would just mix you like a, a tonic in the back that, cause like, okay, cause I've gotten too far with this. But that being said, isn't like, like cough syrup doesn't cure your cold. It just treats your symptoms until you're better, right? It's basically like the cough medicine is like a distraction. It has a little cough suppressant in it and then it kind of spaces you out so you can sleep. Would it be so bad if we just had a, a mixologist pharmacist who was back there with, uh, you know, horse tranquilizer and <laughs> root beer? <laughs> Maybe, maybe, I guess. I kind of, I miss the tinctures, man. I say I miss them. I was not alive in um, the American, uh, the frontier, like the, you know, Wild West days. But if I was, man, I would be getting tinctures for sure. Now, excuse me. What, what, didn't, weren't pharmacists barbers or something like that back in the day too? Excuse me, Mr. Barber. I have had a particularly malevolent bout of diarrhea. Could you please provide a tincture for me so I can stop breaching my breaches? I would totally fit it. Dude, I would have crushed it in the Old West. Just kidding, obviously. What percent... It, maybe you can find data for this online. What percentage of people in the Old West died of murder? Or like, you know, dueling, gunfights, etc, etc. I don't think it was at like 10%, but do you think 5% of people in the Old West died from like a gunfight at high noon in the center of town? Like 5% is still really high. Hey, do you guys know uh, if Bernie Sanders has sold his board ape yet? I was trying to see if it got, um, cause you have, to, when you're like a senator, you have to disclose like investments like that. I was just interested to see if Bernie has moved, uh, has moved his board ape yet, or if he's a true hodler. Some of you have not yet realized 
You could apply up to three slurp juices for a single ape. With the imminent minting of Cyber Kongs, this number may rise to as much as double that. Plus two. Who would have thought? A little Bernie Sanders NFT crossover. Honestly, and I, I hope you'd be honest with me in chat, okay? Logan Paul said he's going to run for president. What percentage of you would vote for him? Let's go over the tail of the tape, okay? He's young, which we always want in politics. Somebody representing the, uh, the, the views and the needs of the young people. Um, he's he's uh, had a career both in entertainment and in sports. Two things that are, for whatever reason, a huge asset in politics. Um, he's a podcaster. We could have our first podcaster president. We, we. Well, I would honestly, if Logan Paul won the presidency, I would be first in line to, to immigrate to the United States. Because I'm assuming that he would like fast track it for other YouTubers. It's every day, bro, is the thing. He can't even run for eight more years. So I'm actually peeling back the veil of, of irony. I think the age limit to be president is kind of stupid. What is that protecting us from? I, I know I say us, let, you know, the royal us. It's protecting us from an 18 year old president. Who cares if you got an 18 year old president though? Have you seen what the 80 year old presidents have been doing? I mean, I feel like if, if you... An, there should be an age... I, I think you should have to be at least 18. Just because the most important thing is that you complete your high school diploma, okay? I don't want anybody that's in like the 7th grade getting distracted by their presidential campaign. And as a result, uh, you know, just screwing up their chance to get into a good school or something like that. Because they're too busy running for president i'm not playing well um but sure at 18 plus do or maybe you know what maybe 12 because i think it would be sick to watch joe biden debate a 13 year old in the in a presidential debate after 2016 the door is wide open for insanity right watching joe biden debate uh, the an alpha zoomer it could be incredible man you could drop orange justice on him. Whatever, Joe. Whatever, Joe. Joe, you're old. Old. Joe, you're old. Sheesh, Joe. It's already a spectacle. Like, why not? Why not just play into it? But in all sincerity, like, you know, I say this to someone in my 30s, so maybe I'm biased. I don't think there's any reason you shouldn't be able to be the president when you're like 25 years old. You can be like an idiot at basically any age plus two minus two if anything i mean this is like maybe again this is going to be accused of just farming plus twos but if anything i feel like there should be like an upper age limit on it because the older you get the higher your risk of you know cognitive decline which seems like i would i would much rather have uh you know a, a president i guess who's hasn't made it to middle age and as a result maybe lacks a certain amount of wisdom than than one whose uh you know mind is actively failing like they i get the idea you want to have someone whose brain is fully developed but i also there's got to be like an upper maximum man and the upper maximum should be 40 in my personal opinion i think you should really only be able to be the president between you know maybe 50 okay 25 and 50 are the are the ages that you can be president what is the, like, this is a, a classic Jeopardy question. What's the age limit on being American president? It's 36? The, the age minimum, I should say? 35? That's too old, man. I mean, that's not, I don't mean that's too old to be president. I mean, that's too old to be the youngest you could possibly be to be president. Isn't the Finnish prime minister, like, uh, she's, like, literally 35 years old? You're just mad you're not old enough to be president? I'm never gonna be president anyway. Let's ignore the fact that I'm Canadian. I'm bald. Ever since the advent of television, people will not vote for a bald president, man. Unless they wear an insane toupee. Last bald president, Dwight Eisenhower. But he wasn't like bald, he was like 1950s bald. 
which meant he wore like a U.S. military cap the whole time and then kept the sides shaved tight with a little horseshoe. I'm waiting for facial hair to win again. Well, Ted Cruz has a pretty alpha beard. So like 2024, maybe 2024 President Ted Cruz with his cool pay to win uh, mobile game whale beard. No, no, minus two, minus two. Bernie Sanders could grow uh, mutton chops. What job industry do you think most of your viewers are in? I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if the, I don't think there's a majority in anything, but I definitely wouldn't be surprised if there was like, the, the plurality are somewhere in IT or students or software. And I don't know, IT and software, they still have a little overlap for me. But I feel like IT is a great job to be in if it comes to watching, when it comes down to the frequency of your ability to watch Twitch. Because I, the way I understand it, and this is not a knock at all, but I feel like a lot of IT is sitting in your office waiting for somebody to tell you what to do because they have a problem, because they forgot their password and then they have to change it, but they can't change it to anything they've used on their last three attempts. And they've already used uh, both of their kids' birthdays, so they, like it's, it's a necessary job for sure that also has a lot of downtime. I imagine it's like being like a trauma surgeon. You probably spend a lot of time in the ER like looking at your phone and then like, once every two hours, you're like, I'm going to save a man's life. I don't think I would be good at IT. I think it requires having too much patience with self and you, you got to be a little detail oriented. You got to be very patient with people who inflicted their own problems on themselves. I see a lot of me going, ah, let me guess, locked out of your email again. May I make the suggestion? for the upteenth time that you use one of the many password managers available. Um, excuse me, Barbara, you have failed our phishing training for the 20th time in a row. Please report to IT. Barbara, you can't just click on every link that you see in an email that says it's from the, the president of the company, okay? You can't just be Clicking on random non-HTTPS links and... Please be kinder to Barbara, she's doing her best. Well, I have to be kind to Barbara whilst simultaneously impressing upon her the information security risks that come from not being vigilant about phishing attempts, okay? So it's not that I mean to be rude to Barbara. It's that Barbara needs to have it impressed upon her that this is a very serious issue. Plus, I just made her ass up. So I, I structure the bit as I see fit, okay? Yeah, I don't think I'd be good at IT. Well, then people said like, that's just help desk IT. There is like, you know, being like a network engineer or whatever. I actually think like I would be worse at that. That seems like detail oriented with a side of like physics attached. I don't think that's for me. Learn some DevOps. I'm familiar with the phrase DevOps but I'm not familiar with what it means. I know you, you deal with developer happiness, right? But isn't developer happiness just making sure that the fridge is constantly stocked with LaCroix and everybody knows that there's like build your own burrito bowls Friday at lunch in the dining hall? Isn't that what DevOps is? Not at all. <laughs> isn't DevOps um, sending people emails to make sure that they don't add useless stuff to the Trello board? To make sure junior engineers aren't pushing their uh, they're not putting high priority tags on their Trello posts without running it by a manager first. Also, no. Okay, okay. Um, let's try again. Uh, making sure everybody's got an ergonomic chair. Nailed it. That's HR. I thought HR like takes a photo of you when you walk in to determine whether or not your slacks are appropriately business casual. Hey, can I raise another th thing? Um, I know we've been down this road before. IMO, dress codes are, are bullshit. There's, let me give you one exception, okay? If, if you um, are in an outward facing role, either in like biz dev, where you have to meet uh, people from other companies to try to sell them or to try to buy their services, then sure, I get it. You wanna appear, um, serious 
and in a customer facing role I don't give a shit if the person that I'm talking to is wearing a t-shirt and shorts or a suit but I understand that some people do because they're shallow so I, I get it at the very least but if you work in an office or like a cave and you never see anybody at your company but other employees you should be able to wear whatever you want to work within reason. I think you should always have to have not bare feet. But it, uh, and and maybe long pants. And that would be the only I would I would not even want to institute a dress code, but I think if you just said you have to at least wear long pants and you have to wear closed-toed shoes, that would be enough. That's a dress code. Yeah, but it's like I mean I worked, uh, when I worked at an insurance agency, I literally saw no clients and nobody at the, the company that uh, was in any position of importance. And I still had to wear, uh, not even business casual, just business attire every day. They didn't make me wear, in fact, can I, if I'm being honest with you, they didn't force me to wear a suit jacket, but I also feel like if I wore a suit jacket, they would have been like, Please take your suit jacket off. Only big shots get to wear the jacket. You have to wear the complete emasculated look of the blue dress shirt tucked into your slacks with the muffin top over top of your waistband. You don't get to wear a jacket. You get a couple promotions, you get the jacket. Until then, you're wearing the outfit of servitude, sweating through your white dress shirt tucked into your damn dress pants one cummerbund away from serving hors d'oeuvres at the parties of the elites just do insider trading you know something and i'm not advocating for insider trading but because i am a, a boomer nerd we're definitely taking power holy cow i um i listen to like some fairly mathematical um like investing and economic podcasts did you know that insider trading does produce a consistent positive return versus the average but that the return the 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 amount of the return generated by the insider trade is actually something like plus 1.3 percent on average or something like that so it's actually like insider trading the insiders who are trading are basically just as bad as your average trader. I mean, they're not because they produce a consistent mathematical uh, alpha. But at the same time, like it is not like the average insider trade is not like a plus 80% benefit or something like that. That was on the, the Rational Reminder podcast episode with... Um, Professor Fama, if you would like to, to uh, source my claim there. It's a, it's a curious thing, because obviously insider trading is illegal and should be, but at the same time, you would expect it to be a little bit um, more advantageous. What's Fama? Oh, you've never seen Silence of the Lambs? I'd like to eat his liver with some nice Fama beans and Chianti. Would you ever consider moving into a streamer house? I don't know how my wife and, and toddler would feel about, uh, about that decision. In fact, that's even like, I'll be honest with you, that's a cop-out. I would not feel good about that decision. I don't want to live with streamers. I, I mean this in all sincerity. Streamers are so annoying. And I mean that with myself included. We complain about things that are not real problems. I couldn't li live with that being like my on-stream and off-stream life. Like, can you imagine you finish work? Dude, it's so fucked up. My DoorDash driver was 30 minutes late today. I couldn't live with that, man. I would move out in like a week. Also, I feel like, and, and this is more of like, this is more of like, a, I think an age thing than a personal judgment. But I think most people will reach a point in their lives at some point where they don't want their entire life to be content. Like, don't get me wrong. If, if I was in my early 20s and I was, popular on Twitch, I think it would be cool to live in like a streamer house and then be like, well, now that my stream is done, I'm going to go on my house's stream and play uh, Connect Four while they stream, you know, but the 
older I get, especially, although I have had this, you know, attitude for several years, um, the more I'm like, once my stream is done, I'm like, I would like to just be offline, please. I would like to just, uh, I would like to do whatever I want to do and not have every action I take be observed by strangers, positively or negatively, quite frankly. We're strangers? Yeah, obviously. I mean, if that if it makes the content worse to hear that we're strangers to one another, then you need to, I don't know, go watch a streamer who will like write your name on the, on the wall behind them or something like that. It's better this way. It's better for there to be a, a separation between streamer and state. Because it means that I can speak my truth, which is more entertaining for you than be worried about offending you by continually insulting that same dude who says he only eats chicken nuggets and macaroni and cheese. Top five foods if stuck on an island. I gotta just be honest with you, that sounds like a vacation. I'm on an island, I get to have five foods? Jeez, I don't even, I, I don't even think there's a point in answering the question. I don't mean this in a negative way, but like, I feel like you've you've created just a beautiful situation where I can come up with five awesome dishes and then I could eat them, you know, just in a rotation once per weeknight. That sounds like a that sounds like I'm on like a resort. You only get one of each and it has to be like an element food, you know, like you can't you can't subdivide it. I, I can't be like, oh, definitely chicken fried rice with every vegetable I've ever seen in my life. I can't just do that. Well, I mean, I, I here's what I would say, OK? Let's let's take one fruit, and I've, it, I'm on an island. Might as well take mangoes. One of the most delicious fruits of all. Don't think I would get sick of it. Also quite refreshing. Let's take one staple. As a, as let's assume that I have a, like a world class kitchen available to me. Personally, I think I would probably take rice. I don't think rice is my favorite staple, but if I could only eat one staple for the rest of my life and I've already got mangoes, then sure, let's take rice alongside that. So we got mangoes, we got rice. Two, if I may say so myself, two very astute choices so far. Um, I think a meat would go hard, sure. To be honest with you, I mean, how, how much do you have to subdivide it? Again, it's not my favorite meat, but I, I'm choosing based on versatility, I guess. If I, if I could only take one cut of meat, I would probably take chicken thighs. You can do a lot with it. It's got good flavor, good mouthfeel. If I could take the whole chicken, that would be nice too, because occasionally you just find yourself in a, in a breast, uh, in a breast mood. Then I'm trying, I mean, at that point, you got rice, you got chicken thighs, you got mangoes. I'm feeling pretty good. Let's toss in a vegetable. And I gotta be honest, if you're only choosing like one or two vegetables, you're not taking something like an onion, I'm sorry to say. It's gotta be something that is is more of a food than, than a flavoring, as much as I love an onion. Broccoli is an option, I did think about it, but I do think I'd get sick of it. I like a broccoli, but I think there would just be some days where I'm like, I'm so sick of this damn broccoli. I'm basically just concocting a recipe for chicken fried rice <laughs> with some mangoes in it. <laughs> And I'm like, I don't know, carrots go well in a chicken fried rice, but do I really want to just create one dish over and over? It's a tough question, man. Corn would be okay. Yeah, I might. Again, like most of these are not like my favorite foods, but I think I, I could enjoy the, the meals I create out of them on the island. And then I don't know. I don't know what you add on top of that. I guess, I'll, you know, let me get some... Uh, let me get some gochujang to mix into my, my fried rice. There you go. That's my recipe for island fried rice. What about a leafy green? Yeah, sure. You know what? Again, not my favorite leafy green overall. But if, if you're going to allow me to take another one, I, I maybe throw in a spinach there. I might even throw in the spinach instead of the corn, honestly. No turkey feels bad, man. Well, you, 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 uh, if you had five foods to choose from for a desert island, you would end up taking turkey. Like, that's just crazy to me. Like a whole turkey. You would have... Thanksgiving dinner every night. I like, I, I anticipate the Thanksgiving meal the one to two times a year I have it. But to eat it every day, I, I would get sick of turkey real quick. How's the Peloton going? Honestly, like pretty badly. Um, I've, I've been back on for three days now after the food poisoning. But clearly, like, the, the illness has, it sucked something out of my body. Like, it's gonna take longer to, to get back to conditioning than I thought it would. The, the rides for the last three days have not been up to my usual standards. 
But you just, you know, what are you gonna do? You gotta be, you gotta be patient with yourself. I'm not out here trying to have a Mr. Big on the bike or anything like that. You just gotta, just gotta be patient. Favorite NL catchphrase? Dude, I feel like so under attack every time I go to Squeaks' his chat. He goes, every time I go to his chat, he says, let me do my impression of an NL stream. What the hell? And then the, his whole chat goes, OMG, he does, with like Omega Lull or whatever. I'm not gonna say that I don't say that, but that's not the only thing I say. I also say it's morbing time. I also say don't get it twisted. I do the occasional Bernie Sanders impression. You still say juice and squeeze? It depends on the game. We might play some sap today. If we play some sap, we'll be juicing and squeezing, I assure you. Hey, NL, I saw Doctor Strange after you recommended it and said it was pretty good. Now I'm never going to trust you again. Honestly, that's fine. Not everybody out there is uh, cinematically minded enough to appreciate a Sam Raimi film. Michael Bay had one that came out a couple of months ago. It's called Ambulance. The entire movie takes place uh, in, an, in an ambulance. Maybe that would be a little bit more your speed. Plus, it's going to be on your favorite streaming service soon. I'm sure it'll find its way to the Roku channel. Boom, roasted. Stanley, you crush your wife during sex. Boom, roasted. Okay, this team goes off. You like the lobster? You can't talk? Bro, the lobster's a good movie. Chat, back me up here. How do you feel about your ghost Lanthimos's film the mo I mean Lanthimos's film the lobster? Ass, ass, ass. <laughs> Terrible. I, I, Josh, don't even get started with me because I do this bit where I'm like, people are not able that the average smooth brain cinema viewer is not able to properly critique a movie if it doesn't fit their expectations. Instead, they just go. That was weird. That was... W so I'm supposed to believe... I'm supposed to suspend my disbelief that, like, if you don't find yourself married by the time you reach age 38, then you become an animal? What? Do we... And yet we never see Norman Osborn working on the machine that turns men and women into animals? We never see what kind of adamantium generator powers this machine. At least say what you will about the Super Mario Brothers movie. But at least they show Toad going into the de-evolution chamber and becoming a Goomba. Yorgos Lanthimos didn't even have that cinematic vision. He just had Rachel Weisz talking like a robot. Go into the bathroom and you gotta knock on the door. Honey, what's taking you so long? Are you doing Unshen Andalusia in there? Fuck you. <laughs> Sorry. My baby will be walking soon. Any advice? I don't know how to do be a jolly joker real quick. Uh, yeah, buckle up. Buckle up is a good way to phrase that. That's when things... I, and I, I was talking to, to some other dads at, at uh, daycare about this. It's a double-edged sword. Because w for those of you who, who don't have kids or maybe not familiar with like, you know, how the developmental stages of a child, the first like month that you have your first child is just madness. You don't know what's happening. They don't know what's happening. You drive to the hospital as one individual. You leave the hospital as a different person. And then you don't get any sleep and it's... Uh, Everything's scary. You're Googling stuff like 20 times a day. Then you enter almost like a recovery period where, especially as the dad, the baby is not that hard to care for because they just sort of like sit there. From like one month to whenever they start walking or crawling, I guess. But they're really, they just kind of chill in like their, their chairs and stuff like that going like, It's still hard. I'm not going to say that you, you don't have things to do, but it's a little like uh, it's a come down period from when things were crazy. But then it ramps up again when they start to crawl and it ramps up like crazy when they start to walk. But it also coincides with other developmental milestones that I think allow you to actually be like a good dad.
Like being a dad for the first year of your child's life is just like being a caretaker to a dependent, basically. Like you, you know in your head that like this is your child, but it's not like you're getting any thank yous or anything. You're not imparting like important life lessons. But once you start being able to take your kid to the park and then, you know, at communicating with them and being like, what do you want to do? And then your kid's like, go on swing. You're like, okay, let's go on the swing. Then you really start to be able to feel like a dad. So I guess all I would say is this is where, you know, prepare yourself. You're going to put more work in over this period when your kid starts to walk. But you're also going to get more in return. You're so old. You shouldn't be trying to throw me, okay? I see the 10 next to your name. You're a super believer. You should be supporting me. <laughs> Yesterday, he kicked me in the nuts and laughed. You'll, you'll still get some of that, for sure. That's not going anywhere. I did it to my dad once. I'm kind of waiting for comeuppance, because I remember I, uh, my dad told me a story about how when I was two, he was really sick. And I came like running out of my room and jumped on his stomach and groin region with such impact that he threw up immediately. So like this whole week, as my stomach's been very tender, I've just been keeping an eye out because I know history might not repeat, but it rhymes. So I was just waiting for my daughter to be like, Daddy! And then like run up and jump on my lap and then I shit my pants. So I've been, I've been keeping an eye out. You know, give me one of these. I don't care for the pill bug. I, I just said that. I don't care for the pill bug. I don't think we croissant anything. Headstrong, I'll take you on. Headstrong, I'll croissant anything. I, I really wish I wasn't pinning so much on a fish here, but we're, we're kind of in a holding pattern still. But it is, like, it, it's genuinely, like... It changes the game as a dad when your kid can communicate. Like, I actually feel like a parent now instead of just, like, a, a guy who's making sure that my child doesn't die. <laughs> There's still a lot of that, but... Uh, now we can also have, like, a conversation. To a, not, a, you know, an advanced one, but a conversation nonetheless. It won't be long until the conversations just turn into them asking you for something they obviously can't have and you saying no. See, that's uh, true, true. That's pretty true. Don't shoot my marmoset, even though we lose anyway. But I... And you don't know what kind of parent you're going to be until you're in it, I'll admit. But I have definitely thus far... I'm sorry, Swan. It has to be like this. I am thankful that I have not been one of those parents that has a problem saying no to their child. Like so far, like sometimes, you know, I'll be like, what do you want for dinner? And she'll, she started saying, um, which is so cute, but she'll say, um, cupcake. And then I'm like, are you crazy? I'm obviously, what kind of parent would I be if I gave you a cupcake for dinner? That's just madness. And sometimes she'll like, she'll get quite upset. She'll be like, no. Cupcake, cupcake, cupcake. And I'm like, you can cry all you want. I'm not giving you a cupcake. Like, that's just... I, I can't give you an adult-sized cupcake for dinner. That's just madness. Which is why I was laughing so hard at that... Um, the mom photo where she was like... Uh, my th little three-year-old has loved driving all his life. Been obsessed with it all his life. Is there anywhere I can take him where he can drive instead of just driving on our dead-end road? Like, you just gotta... Part of being a good parent is just learning that you gotta say no to your kid, like, a lot. I know how this sounds, but, like, the child does not actually have any power in the situation. They only have the power that you give them. What are they gonna do, cry? Like, they, you get inoculated to that in, like, the first year of their life because they cry all the time. So if you're gonna cry because you can't have a cupcake for dinner, that doesn't bother me, because I've seen the other stuff you cry over. You cried over everything. You're so lucky that was a sheep. Holy cow. Yeah, the child does not have their own best interests in mind. You, you got a three? I thought, well, actually, that run was insanely cursed.
three is about where we deserve to be. Drake? Who? But I think it's like a misnomer. I, I wouldn't suggest that uh, like the average parent is not good at saying no to their kid. It's really just that's such a good unit for us, man. I think it's just one of those situations where like a few bad apples uh, like spoiled a bunch. Like all it takes is one parent who's like, well, um, officer, he said he wanted a gun for his birthday. What am I supposed to do? You only turn six once. I know I already told you this, by the way, but I'm going to lose my freaking mind if I see one more ad in BC telling me to get my booster shot when I already have my booster shot and they won't approve my age group to get our booster shot yet. Every time I turn on the TV, I'm condescended to. A bunch of like 70 year old people flying kites and shit in Vanier Park. Don't forget, do the right thing for your community. Get your booster shot. John Oregon, you won't give me my booster shot. Stop wasting my money to tell me to get a thing you won't give me. You're just putting dollar bills right into the paper shredder. It's like, anyone else here from Vancouver? When um, last summer, when, when COVID, I think it was the Delta wave was going off, and uh, noted longstanding member of parliament, Hetty Fry, made a tweet that was like, Hey, my constituents, I'm really disappointed in how many of you under the age of 40 have been vaccinated so far. Look at these numbers. Almost everybody in their 70s has gotten the vaccine and almost nobody in their 30s has gotten one. Hetty Fry, we haven't been approved yet. You, could, you gave it to the 70 year olds first. We're not even open yet. And then you're saying the, the old millennials aren't taking the jab. They, they, they won't let us in the damn clinic. Anyway, she deleted the tweet after we cyber bullied her, which was good, but go ahead, big spider. I was like, I was so scared. I was like, why does my puppy have such ass stats? I forgot we were still swapping, but that's only till we get a level two uh, frog, which is gonna happen any second now. Any questions? Got it memorized. Do you think, what, what do you think is the worst reaction image template? Because I feel like in 2020, we've got to give a, a serious nod to Barney Stinson from How I Met Your Mother holding a beer to the camera and going, he's right, you know. That one's got to be up there. Robert Downey Jr. one is the worst? What are you talking about? You talking about this one? I am going to federal prison. That's a great meme, dude. WTF, my 18 month old just heard you say I am going to federal prison and started bawling. Kids are crazy, man. Wait, so he, he, let me give you a little bit of the parenting cycle. I was being super dad like three months ago and then um, my back started to hurt. So I went to physiotherapy and had to take some rest. Kate took over the super dad duties and then wouldn't you know it, her back started to hurt. Who would, it turns out there's a universal uh, common element here. Anyway, so Kate was like, can you give me a massage? And she laid down on the couch. I was giving her a massage and I was like, I was getting in there. I was putting, I could feel like the, the broken potato chips in her back. And I was like putting my, the tips of my knuckles right into them and going like, rawr, rawr, rawr. So she was making noise, you know, like grunts. And uh, my baby was on the couch right next to us. And she just looked at me and like her, her mouth went like. And her eyes started to well up, but she wasn't letting like any reaction happen. I think she honestly thought that I was like killing mommy. But she, like her survival instinct kicked in and was like, don't cry because then maybe it'll happen to you next. It, it broke my heart, man, because she was getting like traumatized. I was just giving my wife a massage. But then she was like upset, but she didn't want to let me know that she was upset. It made me feel like a bad person just for giving my wife a massage. But like he, she had tears in her eyes, but like they weren't actually rolling down her cheeks yet. They were just welling up. And then her, her lip was just going like, oh man. My son was born recently. I played a bunch of sap in the hospital. It was kind of nice. 
dude, honestly, I'm not going to say that the mother who gave birth doesn't have it the hardest because that's insane. However, what I am going to say is that the dads also kind of go through it and they don't get any credit. Like Kate, she got to sleep in a big hospital bed. She had the TV remote. It reticulated. It reclined. I had to sleep on a little like thin garbage bag mattress next to the hospital bed. And on top of that, the room was at a damn angle. Like we were in the corner of a building. So I couldn't even leave the mattress straight. Like the, the tail of the mattress was it jutting up against the wall. So like I had to keep my legs up like this while I slept. And don't even get me started at the food, man. You should have just slept outside on the ground. See, this is what I'm saying. The dads don't get that much respect, man. I don't know. Is anybody from the BC government listening to this? Because I think I could go to prison for this. They told us that only the mother can order food from the cafeteria. Guests are not allowed to order food. Well, who's to say that my wife wasn't really, really hungry the morning after she gave birth? Who's to say that she didn't order enough breakfast for two people because she just gave birth to another human being? And maybe a couple sausages and a waffle slipped off the plate. We did that too. I support that. Guests can't order. Was it free food? Well, yeah. I mean, I mean, it depends on your definition of free. You know? I mean, it's free in the sense that we weren't billed for the food. It's not free in the sense that we've been paying for the food every April since we turned 18. Also, I want to like... I'm not saying we need a businessman president, okay? But if the food is so expensive that the father of the child is not supposed to get a free breakfast, somebody needs to go into the damn books and figure out how much they're billing for those shitty sausages. Those sausages should have been like 60 cents each. I want to I wanna bust open the damn books and see how much Gibson's Food Services is charging the BC hospital system for each one of these sausages. Because it's got to be... I bet they're billing them out at like 15 bucks a sausage, which is crazy. You don't want to know? The food was... I, I, look, we had other problems, don't get me wrong. But like the food was way too shitty for them to be that stingy. It was like if, if it had been a restaurant and they were like, oh... Can you please order? Uh, we're very busy. I would have been like, don't flatter yourself, sweetheart. What do you think this is? Blue Water Cafe? We we're just a captive audience. We didn't have any other options. We were just begging for the slightest hit of caloric content. Plus, we weren't allowed to bring our own food because of COVID. They're worried I was going to bring a plastic thermos with the novel coronavirus in it, put it in the shared fridge and infect everybody else on the ward through a hitherto unknown transmission vector. Shit was mind-boggling, man. Whatever. I took a lot of apple juices out of the communal fridge. They were for everybody, by the way. It, it wasn't like I stole the apple juices for the recently uh, delivered mothers. But I, I took more than my fair share, and I would do that shit again. They treat you like damn cattle. I mean... They do keep you safe and healthy, too. It's a pretty exhausting job, <laughs> you know? Just imp I just want to see what they're billing people for the sausages, okay? Just seems like maybe like a, if they could get a CEO in there, he could right the ship. I don't want a privatized hospital, okay? But what I do want is the food to be better. Or at least for them to let me take a thermos in. It's a hospital, not a restaurant. Yeah, but they like, you know, you're going to be running the restaurant in there anyway. Why not get like Wolfgang Puck to cater it or something like that? He could, I'm sure Wolfgang Puck could set up some serious, uh, he could set up like some quick service pizzas or something like that. That's what he does. When my kid was born, we just ordered Domino's to the birth center. Well, I will say, um, my aardvark, it's like, I needed that. I did go get Kate some McDonald's after, uh, after we finally got off the clock. But they should just put a McDonald's in the hospital. Ah, uh, that's true. If I worked there, I wouldn't want to smell the fries all day long. Because you'd be so distracted. You'd be like, oh, I'm trying to like save someone's life. And they just keep 
All I can do is smell these fries. Or instead of putting a restaurant in the hospital, start putting hospitals in the damn restaurants. Like you've already got great restaurants out there. You could put a couple of hospital beds inside a Chipotle or something like that. What's the problem there? You ever have Korean hospital food? It's bussin' for real. Well, that's like, I mean, honestly, Kate's been in chat. I don't want to blow up her spot, but Kate's been in chat giving me like a lot of question marks over and over. But part of the impetus for this bit is actually that she watched like some Korean pregnancy vlogs. And when they give birth in the Korean hospitals, they actually, they treat you like a client, I guess, instead of just a patient. So like, they, they'll they give you like a, a lovely room. They'll give you uh, restaurant quality food. They like, it seemed like a privilege to be there. And they have socialized medicine as well. I don't know, because I didn't watch the, the vlog specifically. I don't know if it maybe was a private hospital, but I mean, I guess that would explain it. But I don't know, because like I, one time, I, and I told this story recently, so I apologize for the overlap. But one time I had to go to the doctor in Korea and they told me, oh, like bad news because you're not a citizen. You're going to have to pay like the private rate. And then I saw the doctor. We had like a 30 minute consultation. He gave me a prescription. I left and was like, okay, how much do I owe you? They gave me the bill. It was $12. So like, I mean, even if it's not the, the public hospital, I mean, it's still, I'm not sure how expensive it would end up being. You just made the biggest mistake of your brother. You're frozen. Let me give you my internal dialogue. Me lighting him up. When your gun runs out of bullets, just switch to literally any other weapon. I scroll the scroll wheel one scroll. When I have to reload, it takes out the pizza cutter. I say, oh shit, what the hell? I scrolled back one more gun. It takes me to the gun with no ammo. I say, what the hell? I go back the other way. And then I switch to the pizza cutter again, and then I died.